Hi, I'm Stuart Cohen, and I'm a mechanical engineering graduate student at the University of Texas at Austin doing research with the Weber Energy Group. I'm going to give you an introduction to my research, which looks at ways that flexible operation can improve the prospects of implementing carbon dioxide or CO2 capture at coal-fired power plants. There's broad scientific consensus that global warming and climate change are occurring and that carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuel burning are the primary cause. We must address CO2 emissions from all uses of coal, oil, and natural gas. But coal-fired power plants are a primary target for emissions reduction efforts because they alone produce about 33% of U.S. carbon dioxide emissions. Eliminating coal from the electricity sector may be a plausible long-term strategy, but coal-fired facilities currently provide about half of America's electricity and typically operate for several decades. In addition, coal resources are relatively plentiful, politically secure, and inexpensive. While the world transitions from the existing fossil fuel-based energy infrastructure to a sustainable energy system, carbon dioxide capture and sequestration, or CCS, will be a key technology that will allow continued use of coal in an environmentally acceptable manner. A typical coal-fired power plant burns coal and uses the heat to boil water to produce high-pressure, high-temperature steam. The steam then expands through a turbine that spins a generator that produces electricity to be distributed throughout the electric grid. Burning coal produces exhaust gas commonly referred to as flue gas, and coal-based flue gas contains about 13% CO2 by volume. Coal in the ground is Earth's natural filter, so burning it also produces several other pollutants that must be removed before the flue gas is released to the atmosphere. There are several possible technologies that could allow us to use coal for electricity without significant CO2 emissions. Pre-combustion CO2 capture actually removes CO2 prior to burning the fuel. An oxy-firing technology burns coal with pure oxygen so that the flue gas consists of nearly pure CO2 that can be easily separated. Though both of these technologies are being seriously considered, I will focus this discussion on the leading post-combustion CO2 capture technology, meaning it removes CO2 from the flue gas after the coal has been burned. This technology is called chemical absorption and stripping. In chemical absorption and stripping, flue gas is sent to an absorber, a large column where the gas contacts a chemical solvent that reacts with and absorbs the CO2. A well-designed absorption column can remove about 90% of the CO2 from flue gas. The CO2-rich solvent must then be heated in order to release a nearly pure stream of CO2. So it travels through a heat exchanger to a stripper column where it is heated with steam extracted from the power plant turbines. The solvent, stripped of most of its CO2, is then recycled back to the absorber and a stream of CO2 exits out the top of the stripping column. The CO2 must then be compressed to allow pipeline transport to a permanent storage or sequestration site, so some of the power plant's electricity output must also be used for CO2 compression. Suitable CO2 sequestration sites include depleted oil and gas reservoirs, unminable coal deposits, and deep underground saltwater reservoirs. CO2 sequestration is another major research topic in the CCS world, but I will restrict our discussion to CO2 capture. Because chemical absorption and stripping is added at the tail end of other pollution controls, this technology is a very good candidate for retrofitting CO2 capture to current power plants. This technology has been used for several decades to perform CO2 capture at smaller scales in the natural gas purification and ammonia production industries. So there's already a valuable experience in building and operating some of the major components in this process. Pre-combustion and oxy-firing technology with CO2 capture are comparatively newer technologies and are more difficult and expensive to retrofit to current facilities. While this technology does have some advantages, full-scale systems will cost several hundreds of millions of dollars to build at a large coal-fired power plant that delivers several hundred megawatts of power. In addition, the energy required for solvent stripping and CO2 compression can reduce the power plant's output by roughly 30%. So a 500 megawatt plant could become a 350 megawatt plant after adding an absorption stripping system. However, another advantage of the add-on nature of this system is the potential to operate the CO2 capture system flexibly. Instead of assuming that the energy requirement for CO2 capture is lost for the entire life of the power plant, a flexible CO2 capture system could allow a power plant to regain its full pre-capture output by diverting the steam used for solvent stripping back to the power plant turbine for electricity generation. Because CO2 is no longer being stripped from the solvent, there is no more energy requirement for CO2 compression. This type of flexible operation could be performed 
by bypassing the CO2 capture system completely or by varying the steam and solvent flows to the stripper column. As described here, a flexible CO2 capture system would result in additional CO2 emissions when the CO2 capture system is turned down or off, resulting in higher CO2 costs if there is a price for emitting CO2. An alternative flexible CO2 capture configuration could use large solvent storage tanks to continue absorbing CO2 when stripping and compression systems are turned down or off, but this configuration will not be discussed here in detail. Feel free to come back to our website, WeberEnergyGroup.com, for more updates on all our students' research, our latest publications, and the things we're up to these days.